What's going on, Faithful? It's Friday. It's 5 o'clock, so you know what that means. It's time for some Niner talk. Or you might not know what that means yet. Welcome to the new series of Not So Pro Niner Talk. You know, if you guys do or do not know, we usually go live on, on Mondays, Tuesdays. We have videos Thursdays, Packer Talk Wednesdays, and we got schedule predictions Saturdays. We are all over the place, but this is a new series about the Niners, all about the Niners. So I'm here talking to you, Faithful, and... Today, I really want to talk about Jimmy G. You know, it's probably one of the biggest topics right now besides, you know, if Mike McGlinch is going to be healthy, if Trey Lance is going to be the guy, you know, we're going to push all that to the side because I think some Jimmy G news is coming out pretty soon. And it is. It is because on the 31st of this month, that's where teams have to make their 53-man roster. So is Jimmy G going to get traded? Is he going to get cut? This is where we're going to go in depth. I'm going to let you all know what I think is going to happen. But only time could tell, really. But here we go. Uh, so the 31st is coming up. Right now, we are waiting to see what's going to happen with Deshaun Watson. As of now, he is going to be suspended for six games. It did get appealed. So I, I know they want to have a full season suspension, which if that does happen, Jimmy G is gone. Jimmy G is going to the Browns. He will be a Brown uh, for this upcoming season, and here's why. It, it just makes too much sense. The Browns are a, a win-now team. They do have a playoff-caliber team, in my opinion, and it is a very similar offense to the 49ers. They are a QB-friendly offense, a run-heavy offense, and they have a good old line. Uh, what else do you want for Jimmy G? Because if you're like me, I'm tired of hearing this whole, oh, I'm team Lance, I'm team Jimmy. You could be team both. You could be team both. You could be excited for the future. Let's, let's pause real quick, okay? Come on, Faithful. Get excited. Our, our season's coming up. We got Trey Lance. That, that dude's a young stud. And if you guys saw what he did during the preseason, you should be excited. I know it was only two series. I know he overthrew Dwelly. I know he he didn't read uh, Gray the first time as quick as he should have. But you know what? There was a lot of potential that I saw that deep ball. When's the last time you saw the Niners confidently throw a deep ball like that? And don't even get me started with Danny Gray. If you guys were up on your seat that game, when that pass happened, I don't know. I don't know what to say to you, um, but I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited as well. But you could be rooting for both guys, both Jimmy and Trey. I know I am. I'm I'm very pleased. I'm very thankful for what Jimmy has done for the team. You know, he's not the type of quarterback that wins you games. He's the type of quarterback that can get you a win, but he won't win you a game. And a lot of people were always praising Jimmy G. Oh, you know, he has such a high win percentage. You know, he was coming back in the fourth quarter. As John Chapman once said in the 49ers Rush podcast, you, you don't thank the guy who put out the fire to your house when he's the guy that started the fire. You know, uh, Jimmy G, as, as you all know, it was very stressful every Sunday watching him go out there, watching him play. Uh, he makes a lot of questionable decisions, you know, a lot of interceptions. And then he tries to make it up at the end, which normally he does. And then he looks good and he's he keeps his job for another week. But it, it was just so stressful. And also another thing that I was so stressed about was his injuries. Um, let, let's start off. We won't count 2017 because he did play a full year. So 2018, uh, we all remember that that year. We're so excited for Jimmy G to come out, start for the Niners, our new franchise quarterback. I know I was super excited. Uh, week three, I believe, uh, against the Kansas City Chiefs, non-contact injury towards ACL. He was out for 13 games. It was Ah, it, it, it was rough. And I think that kick started the whole uh, rivalry with Kansas City uh, for this era. I know back then there, there was probably a different story. But then the following year, 2019, he played healthy. He was he was a healthy dog. And we went to the Super Bowl. But, of course, we came out short, as you all know, against Kansas City. I hate to say it, you know, not as bad as the Seattle Seahawks, but you just hate to think about it. Right. But he played a good season. The following season in 2020, he missed 10 games with an ankle injury. And then last year he missed three games. What's three? Games? Yeah, he missed uh, two games with uh, with more injuries. It's just injuries after injuries after injuries. It kind of reminds me a lot of uh, Debo Samuel. Of course, he had a, a phenomenal year last year. That's why he got paid so much money. But you don't you want more of a consistency when it comes to your quarterback. I'm not saying Trey Lance is the healthiest guy out there, but I'm saying it's a clean slate. It's a new start. And the past is the past. That's what we have to realize. The past is the past. And what I mean by that is, yes, we did give up a lot of picks. And we did take Trey Lance in the third overall pick. 
That's done. That's over with. We got to trust Shanahan. We got to remain faithful to the team, to the organization, and to the players. And get excited. Get pumped. Get ready for this upcoming season. Trey Lance is a young dude, like I said before. And he has a lot of potential. A very high ceiling. And just to think about what he can do in the Cal Shanahan system. The Cal Shanahan system is very QB friendly. We are a run first team as all of our faithful knows. And I'm very excited to see what our running backs could do. Um, Elijah Mitchell, he had a phenomenal year last year uh, as a rookie. You know, we got him in the sixth round. Phenomenal, right? But the thing about Trey Lance, everyone's saying, oh, what if he isn't the guy? What if he's not great? What if he uh, is inconsistent? You see, in this system, I fully believe that Trey Lance doesn't have to be great. He just has to be good. He just has to be as good as Jimmy G. And we're we're back at it, baby. We're back at the playoffs. We're back at a chance to the Super Bowl because of the system that Cal Shanahan runs. Now, Shanahan, he made a system for Jimmy G. He did. So a lot of people were saying, oh, we lost our chances of going because Jimmy G was such a great quarterback. Okay, then please tell me that Jimmy G is a top 10 quarterback. I love Jimmy G. I do. But you got to be real. He, he wasn't a top 10 quarterback. No, but in that system, it made him look like a top 10 quarterback because it was very friendly to him. And then look at our look at our wide receivers. Look at our weapons. We had uh, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, one of the best offensive lines. We got Juice, Kyle Huschick, one of my favorite players on the Niners right now. You, you can't get it better than that. You, you really can't. Uh, so, yeah, I, I feel like it was very... Uh, very favorable for Jimmy G and it made him look really good. Now, just imagine if Cal Shanahan writes a playbook for Trey Lance. And speaking of playbooks, Jimmy G doesn't even have the 49ers playbook this year. He doesn't. He He's he's not involved in meetings that he doesn't have the playbook and he's practicing separate from the team. So that means that he's either going to get cut or he's either going to get traded. Do I think he's going to get cut? I don't. I can't see it. I can't see it. You know, the Niners. Uh, it's a great organization, and they want to do good by Jimmy G. As we heard from Cal Shanahan say many times. You know, so I think if worse comes to worse, I think Cal Shanahan will try to renegotiate his contract, and if we could give him, if we end up giving him twenty mil this upcoming season to be a backup quarterback, it won't be all that bad. It's kind of like an insurance policy, okay? It's like giving 20 mil to guarantee you a spot in the playoffs. Let's say Trey Lance doesn't pan out. Let's say he's the biggest bust in NFL history, which I don't think he is, and I really hope he's not. But let's say that happens. We have Jimmy G. We let him finish out the, the year, and then more than likely we sign him again. 20 mil to guarantee you a spot in the playoffs? I think I'll take that. Now, do I want him to be with the Niners? Deep down, yes, I do. I, I have, I, I, I stay. I, I grow. I, had, I grow a deep connection when it comes to these players, man. Even for Michael Crabtree, who wasn't very liked, and that's when I started watching football. I started watching football in the Alex Smith, Frank Gore era, and uh, it's hard to see those players go. But I, I would like for him to move on. I would like for him to get traded or to get cut for this reason and this reason only. It would only help the Niners sign Nick Bosa in an easier format. It will be way easier for the Niners to sign Nick Bosa the following year when if we do move on from Jimmy G. That's what I got to say. Um, do I think it's a good move that the Niners are separating Jimmy G from the team? I think so. I think so. You got to give Trey Lance. They already said Trey Lance has handed the keys to the kingdom. You got to give him the confidence and you got to give him the team. You don't want distractions there. Uh, I got some examples here and they're not very great examples. They're kind of poor examples uh, because they're not the style of caliber that we're at right now. I'm going to get a lot of hate from this if I if other you know fans come and watch this. But let's look at the Patriots. You had Cam Newton there and then you drafted Mac Jones. What did they do to Cam Newton? They said goodbye. This is Mac Jones' time. Uh, Cap Newton even said it himself. His winning aura was too strong for Mac Jones. That it was going to overpower him and the team wouldn't respect him. And in a in a certain type of sense, not a fan of Cap Newton whatsoever, in, in a sense, I do see that. And I do think that has you know meaning to it. So, yeah, that happened. Uh, another example um, is, let's say the Jets, right? The Jets, they got rid of Sam Darnold to bring in Zach Wilson. You have to 
give the keys to the to the guy and give him complete control with no distractions. So I do agree that the Niners are separating Jimmy G for now. I say for now because we don't know if we're going to keep him or not. Um, just to give Trey Lance the confidence there. Would I like to see him move to the Browns? I think the organization is kind of trash, but I think it's the best best place for him just because it is a very similar offensive play style. And this is kind of like a tryout season for him, a tryout to show other teams that he is worth it. Um, is he worth it? You know, no, no teams went for him. And is that his fault? Yeah, it is. You know, he didn't talk with the Niners saying that he was going to get surgery. So he kind of screwed the Niners and screwed himself at the same time, getting surgery a week before free agency. Like, come on, dude. What are you doing? What is your agent thinking? What are you thinking? You lost your chance. You had Carson Wentz go to the commanders before you. You had Matt Ryan go to the Colts before you. You had the Panthers having more confidence of Baker Mayfield. I get contracts a big issue, but at the time, these teams could afford it. And, you know, he's not really guaranteed the 25 mil uh, is not guaranteed money. So he could always renegotiate his contract, kind of like what Baker did with the Panthers. Uh, he ate some of his contract up. The Browns ate some of that money up. And then the Panthers took the rest. And I feel like that's going to happen similarly to when the Niners do trade for the Browns. If Deshaun Watson is suspended for a whole season that the Niners might have to take a small chunk of it. I don't think they would take a big chunk because we're not desperate. Um Jimmy G, if he has any smarts to him, he should uh, negotiate his contract a little bit less than what it is now. And then the Browns should take the most out of it because they have the most cap room in the NFL right now, even with Deshaun Watson um, not going to be able to play. It's, it was, it's ridiculous how, what's going on in the NFL right now. But yeah, that's my take on Jimmy G. I do have a lot more to say, but if you do like these series, you guys, for uh, NSP and Niner Talk, let me know. Put it down in the comments below. Hit that like button. Um, Hit that subscribe if you're feeling generous. Appreciate you guys. And until next time, faithful, keep grinding.